hello great youtubers welcome back in this video i would like to share with you how i resolved a compilation error that was popping up whilst i was trying to program esp8266 with the open plc software we'll also do a quick blink example and finally test the modbus capability of this tiny chip let's get started But before we do, I will say big thanks to Doc for giving us this lovely open PLC platform. Kindly subscribe if you've not done that already and also press on the notification bell. This way you always be notified whenever I upload new video. And also give me a thumbs up if you are really enjoying this tutorial series. Okay, so basically if you are having the old open PLC editor software, you will run into issues when you are trying to compile for the ESP8266 board and the way I resolved this was to update the open PLC software to do this you go to the file and then you come and then look for check for update so you select for check for update alright so immediately you click on check on update for update if if not updated it will then start updating and then you need to be patient for it to update everything and then after that you can restart the open plc editor but if you've already updated or running the current updates you will see this pop up and then we can see that i've already updated and then after the updates you'll be ready to compile your firmware for the esp8266 board okay so with the software updated we can just do a quick test on the esp board to do this we will run this simple blink example so i come to file and then i go to open okay and then i open the blink example i select it and then i say select folder then I double click on the blink and then we can have the blink example in our in our programming window all right cool so basically we want to blink an led using the ESP8266 and then with the blink example we need one on delay timer and then another off delay timer and then with this we can see that the output of the on delay is connected to the input of the off delay and then we have the normally close contact here which is supposed to activate the on delay timer anytime the output of the off delay timer goes from logic one to logic zero because this section is normally closed okay so to do a quick test we can just compile and then do a simulation first and then after that we can compile and then send to our esp board great compilation is done i can then put on the google to go into simulation mode and then we can see we can see the output blinking as desired and then the delay or the time interval between the blink is 500 millisecond for the on time and then 500 millisecond for off time as well okay great so with the simulation working perfectly we can go offline again so i stop the plc let's wire up the esp so that we can download our program to it okay so we have an ESP on the breadboard. We have our white and orange cable connected to ground through to the ground of the breadboard. We have our orange cable connected to pin 3 which is our output pin through to the current limiting resistor one end of it to the positive end of the LED and then the negative to the negative of the breadboard. Okay so now that the ESP is wired up we can now prepare and send the program to it but first remember we are sending the program to the ESP now so we need to specify which pin we are going to use as the output okay so to get a fair idea of what the pin is supposed to be we can go to the the documentation on the website we look for the physical address we can look for the pin out for the ESP okay so we have the esp port we can realize that the digital input 
is from 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then the digital output is 0, 1, 2, and then 3. We will put our LED on pin 3, and then the address range is between point 0 up to point 3. So we go back and then we specify the address here. So percent. Okay, good. So with the output pin specified, we can now click on the Arduino icon to download to the ESP. Okay, so next you need to select the board type. I'm using the ESP DI Mini, so I select that one. And then I move on and then select the COM port that the ESP is connected to. To confirm the COM port, you can go to this computer right click and then go to manage so in computer management you go to device manager and then you go to the com port and then when you take off your esp you should see the com port so currently we have eight nine and seven i take it off we can see that seven has disappeared i connect it back and then see whether we'll get seven coming back in all right so connecting it back, it has selected a different port for me, which is 21. So I will use that COM port in my... I have to close again and then restart because uh, it has selected a different COM port. Okay, so confirming the COM port, it's accepted COM21. So I select COM21. And now I can click on the upload to send the program to the ESP. Remember, is this is your first time of uploading. It will take a while so you can sit back and relax right so download successful we click on cancel and we can see the LED blinking just as it did in the simulation okay great so with the blinking working perfectly let's have a bit of fun by activating the Modbus protocol so that we can monitor this output from our Modbus simulator Modbus is basically a powerful software that will, can help us interface this tiny chip to an HMI software which is human machine interface software or probably to factory IO so that we can simulate right from factory IO I'll be covering some of this topic in my next tutorial okay great so to add the Modbus functionality first I would like to be able to enable and disable the blinking from the Modbus interface so to do that I'll be adding an enable contact to our logic so let's modify the logic a bit okay so i'll add a new variable so i click on the plus sign to add so basically this is going to be a enable variable so i'll call it blink underscore enable and observe this one is labeled as an output because i'll be using the output quell within the mod box to activate this particular input so let me specify it to be 0.0, .0. So I'll add the contact. So with this in place, if I disable this, the blink stops. When I enable it, the blink can start again. All right. So after this modification, just click on the Arduino button again, and then you will have this interface. Okay. So we have our board still selected, and then our port still the same port. This time we will need to enable the Modbus. We can either enable Modbus RT or Modbus TCP. Because this chip, which is the ESP8266, has a Wi-Fi functionality, we'll be making use of the Modbus TCP. So I activate that and then I need to specify an IP address. So look for an IP address which is free on your network and then specify it. In my case, it's 192.168.8.182 my gateway is 192.168.8.1 and then for the dns is the same the same gateway ip and then you need to specify the wi-fi credentials so that the chip can connect to it so my wi-fi name is and then you need to enter your wi-fi password great so with this information given the chip should be able to connect to the Wi-Fi and we should be able to access it on this particular IP. Okay, so I now click on the upload to start uploading to the chip. Great, so we can see the uploading is done. I can close it. 
and then to confirm whether the device is connected to your network you can go to the command prompt and then you type ping so you type in the IP address of your ESP and then when it's connected you should be able to have this response great so now the connection is confirmed okay the next thing we need to do is to get the modbus simulator to confirm whether we can connect to the ESP modbus okay so one great modbus simulator that you can use the easiest way to get it is to go to this website brainwise.com okay so when you have this interface open you go to support and then you go to manuals and downloads you move to the third item on the list which is the rain solar monitoring so you select it and then after I finish loading you move down and then you can see the software right here so you click on it to start the download okay so you can move to the location extract it it's extracted here so I can double click to run it okay so installation is pretty straightforward after installing if you go to your item you should see the icon there modbus tester you can click on it to start perfect so we have the modbus tester installed and open now we need to configure it so you go to connection and then you go to settings and then here you have the possibility to choose between modbus rtd or modbus tcp in our case we've used modbus tcp so you select modbus tcp and then you come to the IP side you need to specify the IP of the ESP which is already specified and then TCP port still remains the same you click OK and then you can click on the connection again and then click on connect then you can click on new and then we can see that the modbus is open for us and remember our pin that we use for blinking was on pin 3 and then we can see it blinking just as our LED is blinking perfect so we can see all the modbus type here we can see the call status we have inputs we have holding register and then input register currently we are using the call status so we can see the connection and we can see the blinking happening at point three remember we used zero to either activate or deactivate the blinking so let's test that we can double click here and then i will force this one to on and then we will see whether the blinking will stop update perfect and we can see that the blinking stops and then we have no blinking here now let's reactivate it again now i put it on stop mode and off mode sorry and then i click on update and we can see that immediately the blinking happened great so we've been able to compile and then install our open plc program onto our esp board we've tested it with blink and then also tested it with it modbus tcp ip in our next tutorial we'll interface with factory io through via modbus tcp and also subsequent one we'll be looking at connecting to intouch see you in the next tutorial bye bye